What up, Super Viewers? It's Brian Alice Clark here, and this is Super Viewer. I watch and review movies that I see. That's all I'm gonna do today. Reviewing Agniatha Vasi. So, quick summary of the movie. Paul Juan Kalyan is Abhishek Bhargav, who is the son, the ill, not the illegitimate, because he was the first one, who is the unknown son of a corporate billionaire millionaire billionaire whatever who comes back out of hiding when his father and brother are murdered and his goal is revenge and the saving of his father's company so this movie starts out crazy you see the murders it's visually interesting it's interesting how the son gets murdered because even though you don't see it you imagine he's driving down this road and they like painted a ramp to make him think that he was driving on the road and then it all of a sudden launches him he smashes into a tree dies then the father is found by some goons he is on the phone with the people murdering him and gets shot and falls off a balcony and dies. And I really like what this movie was doing. It had great action. It had a great story of them looking into these other potential CEOs, Varma and Sharma, and you don't trust them and you think they're the villains. Spoilers, we're getting into spoilers. And then it turns out to be a very clever plot by the son of one of the early partners who had been murdered when he betrayed the whole group. So I really like that plot all the way through the intermission, about halfway through the film after that. And it was really gripping. It was different. The main guy at a lot of times, Abhishek, would be like really weepy and cry, even in acting like he was getting what he wanted by weeping. But there was some things which like were just, oh, I noticed that, but it's not hurting the movie. It's fine. Like, uh, like Surya is introduced by crying in a stall because her boyfriend dumped her. And I'm like, oh, that's very generic in terms of like movies I've seen. That's something I've seen before a lot. Okay, it's a little uh, cliche in my experience, but it's cool and the story is cool. Like she took out half a million and gave it to her boyfriend in advance pay and he stole it and went away. Cool. And then AB literally uses that on Lavanya in that same story as a way to get a into like the records of Barma. So like you see where he's going with this. He's befriended Surya to infiltrate Sharma's stuff. And then he is just befriending Lavanya as a way to get into Varma's stuff. And you get where there is going with that. But both characters are kind of, I don't know, cliche in ways like how Surya is introduced crying and Lavanya for no reason and is just in love with AB immediately. Just first sight is like, oh, oh. And then he pries and runs away to lure her into the whole bathroom thing and repeat that. And that's funny, but it's like, okay, th that's all right. They're here for the story and it's not their character's moment to shine. Like the actresses, Kirthi and Anu, do a great job. I just think, I just think that in a weird way, especially with Lavanya, the movie could have cut the characters out and not a lot would have changed with the plot. You know? I don't know. I'll get into that in a little bit. I do like stuff like the first time they infiltrate, they shock a guard and the guard comes back. And that filters into the goons of the main son, Seatheron. I like that that came back, but then like a lot of people die and it doesn't. Like when he's going to meet one of the girls, he kills a bunch of people he saw following him and he's like, the key is to make it seem natural, but he shoots them. Like the action looks good, but he shoots them and he's like, you gotta make it look like it was an accident. It's like, no, no, no one's gonna be like, oh, bullets, accident. So that was like a weird detail for me, but it didn't detract at that point. And then he becomes CEO there's a lot of stuff I'm skipping over, but it's good, it's funny, and it all works. And it's really building towards something great. And then he becomes CEO, and he immediately has this really weird scene where he starts whipping Sharma with his belt. And then he chases Sharma, and I think a little bit of Varma, around with a bike in the office. And I was just completely like, you figured out they're not guilty. What? Why are you 
terrorizing them. It reminded me of an episode of Entourage where the character of Ari Gold buys another talent agency and comes in with a paintball gun to fire people with the paintball gun. He has two companies and they're merging and some people are redundancies or he doesn't want them and he's coming after one guy who betrayed him before. And so he goes around and he's like, who do you represent? And someone says something, he's like, okay, cool. And then someone else is like, Jake and Kate, I don't know, I don't watch reality TV here. Jake and Kate plus eight. He's like, ha, that's funny. There's usually redundancies and firings and emerging. And then he finds the person that he's looking for and he just, lights him up with a bunch of paintball guns. That was hilarious, and it totally made sense to the story and to the character. This, out of nowhere, he's acting like a psycho. I I didn't get it. And then the next scene where Varma is, like, having paralysis, panic attacks, I didn't get that either. And then, and then Lavanya forgives him, and I get it. But for me, I would have cut out that whole bike riding, whipping scene and like the panic attack thing, just get to the forgiveness. Also, I didn't really buy that he liked either girl anytime. Like, they don't kiss. It's implied that they almost kiss a couple times, but he never seemed in love. Like, they looked like they liked him. And then all of a sudden he needs to go to another country to get the will, and he brings both of them along. Why did he bring them along? And then they're acting just generically catty towards each other, like slapping each other, having cat fights, like literally cat fights. And I get it, it's objectively funny, but it was felt out of place for me. And I talked to some people who see Telugu films a lot. Like that's the one thing they mentioned, like, do you see a lot of Telugu films? And I was like, what'd you think? And they're like, okay. And they kind of agree with me of where it just fell off a bit. Like, first, you don't need the girls there. Then the bad guys get the briefcase with the will, but you find out that the will is fake later, so why did he actually get it back? And the girls were there to give it to the villains. Again, I mean, if you want to convince them that they won, just chase after them and then lose them. And it's like, hey, they thought they got away with it, but you didn't need the girls there. And then... At the end, he's like, which girl do you want? Uh, I don't know. For me, the female characters were generic until they were just straight up misused. They literally had just no reason to take the will and give it to the bad guys. These are just... They were cliche, but they were smarter than that. And worse, the movie didn't even need to have them do that. Like, it was cool that he used that knife to hook the briefcase and bring it back. But you could have done that stunt and have him spin out and crash or something. And then it's really tragic. And not because some characters did some out-of-character shit all of a sudden. And, I like, I know I'm mainly talking about bad stuff, but it's just because it got so far and then it tripped at the end. And these weird things came out all like almost one after the other. And then it, unfortunately in the movie watching experience, undercut some really powerful stuff. Like the last scene with A.B. and his stepmother. Oh, that was powerful. But you would just come from like, all right, uh, that's weird. Like, I don't know. There were just a couple things. Like I said, I would have taken out the bike riding scene. I would have taken out the whole paralysis scared stuff. Uh, keep the lashing scene for the guy that kept touch, touching the woman's butts. Great. Good. That, that could have been his returning to the office claiming his place scene. And then the obvious questions of the will come in. And it's like, oh shit. Like he just spent an hour whipping a guy and like he might be fake. Like, this guy seems like a threat, and the guy, the uh, son is being really smart, the bad guy, and even the uncle turn about that whole thing. It was good. That That's pretty much all I would change. And take the girls out of Belgium, or wherever they went for the will. They don't need to be there. 
And if they're there, don't have them knock vases over his head to take the will. That's stupid. Didn't need to happen. If anything, I was thinking, are they gonna like just have them all be three together and learn to love each other? Kind of like the beginning of the Oliver Stone movie, Savages, where it's Blake Lively and she's in a relationship with Aaron Taylor Kid, Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson and Taylor Kish. I don't remember all their names. I know hers was O for Ophelia. They're in a three-way relationship. Like both of them love her. It was interesting for the story. That one kind of stumbled right at the end. But I was like, oh, are they going to go into a relationship? I don't know, somehow, like, just all learn to love each other? Then it was just generic cat fights. There was a lot to love in this movie, and it's great for the first three quarters of it. And then just some stuff came in that felt out of place and was weird. I, don't know. I think it was a good movie, and I thought... Minus a couple things, it could have been a great movie. If you got tickets to see it, go check it out. This one was weird because for me, I usually have been using a movie pass. Movie pass just stops supporting Indian films, it seems. But this one movie ticket was 25 bucks. So I guess I get it. Cause uh, I went into the movie theater next to a family of four, two adults, two kids. Their tickets alone, $90. <laughs> but I wanted to see the movie. Unfortunately, it just flubbed a little bit at the end. It's not bad. It started filming in April 3rd of last year. So, like, from filming to editing, it's nuts how quickly these movies come out, in my opinion. But it was cool. It was really good, almost great, and then it just tripped a little bit at the end. Which, I, and this is just my opinion. If you loved it, I'm jealous because those few things kind of soured the ending for me. They didn't ruin it, but when it could have been here, kind of went down here. Not a lot. And the fact that it came at the end was worse for the experience. If it had been like a little weird for me in the beginning, but ended strong, would have been a much better experience. But hey, this was cool. All the actors and actresses did a great job. And <laughs> the people getting kidnapped was hilarious. Especially on how long that gag went. It went for a month. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, super viewers. I did say this ticket was 25 bucks, and if I can't use my movie pass for future movies, it's gonna be a little hard for me to keep going to the movies. I wanna do this every week. So I'm just gonna bring back Patreon as an option. I don't know if I can add anything to it, you know? I don't know how much I can actually do besides come up, show up, talk to people and stuff. Uh, I'll try to add some cool things if possible, but if you like this review and you want to throw a buck in my face, that would be greatly appreciated. It would really help with going to the movies uh, to do this, because I really do love this. If that's possible, then God bless. Otherwise, thank you, super viewers. Tell me what movie I should see next in the theaters, because I want to do this every week. I'm going to look out for him. Thank you, super viewers. Remember, don't stop. You're a hero, Brian. And don't er don't interrupt me ever. Oh, yeah, I was making a video to somebody on Twitter, to Brian. It's still recording. Stop. Don't, 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 don't.